Welcome to Mastering and Guideline in Ultrasound and Echo. Hey everyone, left ventricular non-compact cardiomyopathy. That's uh, sometimes they call it spongy myocardium, spongy form cardiomyopathy, hypertrabeculation, persistent myocardial sinusoid, and uh, zaspopathy, and so on. Uh, the different names uh, represent that we have a different spectral uh, disease in uh, that shortly we are going to explain why. For the making uh, more uh, common sense instead of the non-compact cardiomyopathy, I uh, use uh, left ventricular hypertrabeculation. Uh, shortly you notice why. Up to the two decades ago, uh, they thought this uh, type of the cardiomyopathy <coughs> is very rare. It's rare, they, they mentioned less than 0.02%. But nowadays, during the last two decades, with improvement of our diagnostic tools, especially uh, ultrasound and echo and CMR, it showed that the incidence of and prevalence of the, this type of the disorder among the pediatric patient with cardiomyopathy is about 9% and among all echocardiography in adults is between 2-3% and it's not uh, rare. Actually, it's not uncommon too. So, uh, let's see what is uh, going on with this uh, disease. The pattern etiology of this uh, is completely uh, different. It can be genetic, that is go more uh, to the pediatric group of patients when we diagnose this, but it can be sporadic. Actually, a sporadic type is uh, about 60-70% to of the adult, and uh, most of the time uh, it's uh, uh, only involved apex of the left ventricle but into 20 to 40 percent uh, of the cases we have both ventricle and in those uh, genetic type we have global involvement of the left ventricle and, and right ventricle and the future of the specific characteristic feature of uh, this disorder is hypertrabeculation that uh, characterized, characterized by uh, increasing the depth of the intertrabecular uh, groove or recess here that it goes all uh, progress to the compact myocardium as you know we have two layer of the myocardium one layer is a compact that involved with the contraction and systolic function and another part are those uh, trabeculation that we called it non-compact part. In this disorder, uh, not only we have hypertrabeculation, the compact uh, part that we measure in the echo for wall thickness, it becomes thinner and that one of the consequences of that that com, uh, contraction and systolic function, depending on the severity of involvement of left ventricle, we have, we have some degree of the systolic dysfunction. That in the pediatric, because it is uh, more extensive, most of the time those uh, group of the patient represent with the heart failure. But in adult, heart failure is not a significant uh, presentation. Those type of the genetic usually they have common in uh, genetic mutation. Uh, they are in common with like the other cardiomyopathy, especially hypertrophic and dilated cardiomyopathy. And it can be the genetic pattern of this uh, disorder in those type of the genetic disorder can be autosomal dominant. Uh, can be X-related or recessive. Uh, autosomal recessive is completely different variant, and is very uh, is sometimes associated with those uh, genetic neuromuscular disorder like Duchenne 
distro uh, myopathy or Frederick and we can see common more common in those uh, group of the patient in uh, one research uh, has been done they show that uh, this hypertrabuculation that meets uh, those criteria for diagnosis of left ventricle non-compact cardiomyopathy it uh, show it, the incidence of this in among the preg during pregnancy it goes over 70 percent and among the uh, professional athletic it goes to eight percent and after pregnancy or uh, stopping exercise those changes goes back to normal and become uh, we call this reversible based on this uh, dr uh, fiusco and his colleague uh, based on all those uh, study and cases they offer we have uh, two divided this type of disorder left ventricular hypertrabuculation to the uh, two category pathologic and non-pathologic Non-pathologic is those that are reversible uh, disorder or changes like the pregnancy, athletic, sickle cell anemia, and renal failure. And those pathologic can divide it to the two group, genetic that we talk about it, and non-genetic uh, uh, that goes to category of congenital heart disease beside of the uh, uh, non-compact. Among the two group of the society, European and American, there are little non-agreement about to categorize uh, and classify this type of the uh, disorder. If we call it American, they called it uh, cardiomyopathy, uh, genetic cardiomyopathy, and European they uh, classify as non-classify cardiomyopathy presentation of uh, non-compact cardiomyopathy usually it goes to the three category heart failure systolic most of the time arrhythmia especially malignant arrhythmia including atrial fibrillation and ventricular tachycardia that in some cases can cause sudden cardiac death and thromboembolism event that uh, formation of the blood clot between the trabuculation the uh, most important common uh, underestimate and uh, misdiagnosis of the uh, non-compact cardiomyopathy is uh, dilated cardiomyopathy because over half of the patient with this type of the cardiomyopathy left ventricular enlargement uh, we will see left ventricular enlargement and they label it falsely and diagnose it as dilated cardiomyopathy. And another one is apical hypertrophy, that many times they label falsely as a apical hypertrophy. If uh, for not uh, missing diagnosis this uh, disorder, we have to always be aware of this, otherwise we can miss it very easy and uh, the best uh, tools for diagnosis is echocardiography especially with contrast and combined with the spec, uh, strain uh, all those inform important in information that we need for confirmation to, uh, diagnosis and baseline for the management uh, this uh, uh, study usually will be enough but most uh, specialists recommend for uh, making sure 100% diagnosis and having baseline information for follow-up and management. Uh, they recommend we do in all those patients with, uh, with confirmation in echo, do MRI, especially with late uh, gadolinium enhancement uh, technology. The characteristic feature, echocardiogram feature of uh, non-compact cardiomyopathy uh, is hypertrabuculation, thinning of the non-compact uh, compact myocardium. Hypertrabuculation that uh, represents with 
increasing and deep intertrabecular recess and thinning of the uh, compact myocardium. Based on these two features, uh, especially in the apex after insertion of the papillary muscle, based on that, there are a uh, small uh, study by Dr. Uh, Genil and uh, another one by Dr. Chin. They uh, offer uh, the criteria for diagnosis. We can use Dr. Chin offer that we use the ratio of the uh, thickness of the compact myocardium to the uh, length of the tip of the myocard uh, trabeculation to the epicardium. If it's uh, less than equal or less than uh, 0.5 is diagnostic beside of the other finding including hypertrabeculation and uh, uh, in the plaques and in apical in uh, plaques or apical and at the time in endiastolic both those criteria uh, technique for diagnosis is at the hostel and in the plaques view or in apical view. By the Dr. Genil, uh, offer we measure the ratio of the non-compact uh, or trabecula divided to the compact thickness. If it's more than two, it is uh, diagnostic. But many times the definition of the length of the trabecula and finding the myocardium and more accurate is not clear. Based on that, uh, Dr. Uh, Stolberger and uh, Finn's uh, terror, they offer we measure uh, uh, at the apical after insertion of the uh, papillary muscle in any view. Uh, PZAX or in apical view whenever we have more than three trabeculation uh, more than three depth uh, trabeculation in any frame of the our image uh, that represent with deep completely and uh, inter trabeculation uh, tip uh, deep and go all the way to the and involve the compact myocardium, if we see three of them, it is a diagnostic for the non-compact cardiomyopathy. When we do on the PSAX or apical, we decreasing gain uh, with scale and increasing gain and decreasing scale uh, around 40 uh, and focusing color box zoom at that area or using Definity or any other contrast agent, we can detect those trabecula and recess very easy and confirm our uh, diagnosis. Here are the, some type, uh, some uh, cases of the uh, non-compact cardiomyopathy. As you can see, usually we have lateral and uh, septal or inferior wall most of the time at the mid to the apex and it show with hypertrophy it looks like hypertrophy and hypertrabeculation you can see recess go all the way and really we have thin uh, non-compact myocardium and up to here especially this area and this area hypertrophy a little Beside of that, septum in left ventricle, we shouldn't have trabeculation, but in this case, we have it. And if you put color here and decrease the scale, you can see color go feeling all the way up to the here. Or this one, the same uh, deep uh, recess, you can see a lot. Or here, a little less, but still you can see hypertrabeculation and thinning of the uh, comp compact myocardium. Maybe if the patient has complication, maybe we see thrombosis at that level. One of the common, uh, common uh, differential diagnosis for non-compact uh, cardiomyopathy is those moderator band or false tendon and aberrant uh, 
tendon that you can see on this case the feature of them is that both if you follow those any band if you think is trabeculation uh, if it's trabeculation one side should attach to the myocardium one side should be free but in those other cases you can see both end of that band or tendon or whatever you think it is trabeculation is connected to the boat wall so they are we don't have any free end on that structure in that case we know this is not uh, trabecula here we have all those criteria and uh, one more things uh, the criteria with the uh, gap heart that uh, offer when uh, we have uh, the maximum systolic uh, compact layer thickness if it's less than eight millimeter is diagnostic for this disorder but you have to know when you're measuring that spot you have to make sure the patient doesn't have mi or ischemic at that level and we have hypertrabeculation with deep recesses those other uh, criteria those uh, technique for diagnostic criteria by Dr. Chin and Janil and uh, Stolli Berger uh, it has detail you can study by yourself uh, that management for this uh, disorder depending of the what type at what age of the uh, the, the time of diagnosis a little different but generally speaking is as classic like the other situation the treatment for the systolic uh, dysfunction if you need patient digoxin angiotensin uh, converting enzyme inhibitor diuretic and so on for the anticoagulant therapy uh, if the patient is high risk most of the specialists recommend uh, patient put it on the anticoagulant therapy for the arrhythmia uh, some patient need a permanent pacemaker the prognosis uh, opposite the previous studies it shows is not too much bad actually uh, with the now all treatment we have it the prognosis is not too much poor up to the next time have a wonderful time